Welcome to The Personal CFO. Today we're going to be talking about two important risks in the bond market that long-term investors need to understand when building income portfolios. And so this video is a follow-up to a video that I did a few weeks back talking about how you can invest in short-term, really short-term bonds and get a 5% rate of return, which is similar to the expected rate of return in certain markets, including the stock market. And so I had some clients and some friends call in and say, hey, great video, et cetera, but there's gotta be some risks associated with this short-term bond giving me 5%. Why is everyone not doing this? What am I missing, right? You didn't cover this. And so I wanna talk about the risk associated with owning short-term bonds versus the risk associated with owning long-term bonds because everything has a risk and we wanna name it and then let's put some numbers behind it. So what is the risk of owning short-term bonds that are paying you a pretty good rate of return? So to use today's numbers, or mid-July, as I'm shooting this video, the short-term, or I'll just use six-month treasury return, is around 5.5%. So what does that mean? It means you can go buy a treasury bond, get around 5.5% rate of return, and that's a six-month bond. So you just hold it for the six months, at the end of the term, you've gotten all your money back, and you've gotten that 5.5% rate of return. Okay, that's pretty good. What's the risk associated with that bond? Well, the risk associated with it, because since it's the treasury, they can print their own money, we're not really worried about default, and we're not really worried about rates moving around on us because we've locked in that rate for the six months. The risk here is that after six months, we look up and interest rates have dropped dramatically and we're not able to reinvest at the same rate. So use an extreme example, right? What if rates go to 0%? on the short-term bond. Now we've seen it recently, right, in the last couple of years, but historically, incredibly rare. But theoretically, if rates dropped, okay, to a very, very low rate, you would not be able to reinvest at that high rate. And that's called reinvestment risk. And so what is the loss that you would incur for something like reinvestment risk? Well, let's say you put a dollar into your six month bond, you get your five plus percent back, and then you get all your money back, you just reinvest at a lower rate. So you lose the interest that you could have earned if you had locked in a higher rate for a longer period of time. Okay, so that's reinvestment risk. You don't really lose capital, you just lose potential interest that you could have had if you would have locked it in. Okay, great. That's one kind of risk and that's the risk that comes with owning shorter term bonds. Now, which rate, which direction are rates going to go? Uh, people will be predicting over and over. No one knows where these rates are going to go if history is any guide. Now, let's talk about another kind of risk, not for short-term bonds, but for long-term bonds. And you say, okay, well, I don't want reinvestment risk. I wanna lock in an interest for a long period of time so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. Okay, well, let's go to the long-term section of the treasury or the, the far end to the right of this curve. And as you can see over, you can buy 30-year treasury, okay? that is giving us about 4% rate of return. So what does that mean? It means you've essentially locked in a 4% rate of return for 30 years. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you can buy this, you don't have to worry about reinvesting in the rate being lower. Okay, so what's the risk there? Well, we don't have reinvestment rate risk anymore. We have interest rate risk. And interest rate risk is very different and shows up differently in your portfolio. Now, you might have seen that or heard about that last year where rates were going up and the value of long-term bonds was going down. So why is that? Well, let's use that 30-year bond, for example. If I buy a 30-year treasury, U.S. treasury bond paying me 4%, and the treasury decides to raise rates or rates go up on 30-year bonds to 5 6%, whatever that might be, well, what happens to the value of my bond? Well, I've talked in prior videos, and I use a seesaw analogy, is you know essentially price and interest rate are a seesaw when it comes to bonds. So when interest rates go up, price goes down, and when interest rates go down, price goes up. And the longer term your bond is, the more leverage shows up in those numbers. In other words, when you have a short-term bond, it's not really impacted, but when you have long-term bonds, you've locked in a lower rate for a long period of time, so your price goes down dramatically. So let's put some numbers on this. Vanguard has got a long-term treasury fund that has about a 22 year length, so actually shorter than the 30 year. But the important number here, and I'll pull up this sheet from Vanguard, is this number duration that you can see here. And that is a 16. So what does that mean? It, that is the price change for every percent change in interest rates. 
Okay, so let me say that another way. If interest rates go down on the 30-year treasury from where you buy, so let's say you bought a 4% treasury and rates go down in the open market, 1%, and now you know open rates are now 3%. You've actually made the number on that duration because it's 1% change in interest, which means you've made 16% on that bond, which is pretty good in addition to the interest. What's the other side of that? If interest rates go up, a percent and you go from four percent to five percent which is still less than you're getting on a six-month bond you've lost 16 percent as soon as that happens and so you're collecting four percent with the potential to lose 16 percent or four years worth of interest with a one percent increase in interest rates now again no one knows where interest rates are going to go but for many Income investors, they're buying bonds for the income, not to try to speculate on which way the price is going to go. In particular, when you have a bond curve where the short term is higher than the long term, and no one knows which way that's going to end up. And so is it worth it to take interest rate risk, where you give up four years worth of interest for a one percentage change in interest? In other words, if rates go up 1% and you lose 16%, that's four years worth of your bond interest might not be ideal versus your reinvestment risk. Well, it's a different kind of risk. You're not risking the value of your portfolio going down. It's just a matter of if interest rates go from five and a half to four on your shorter term bond, well, you're reinvesting at 4%. Okay, but guess what? The 30 year bond is paying 4% anyways. So you didn't lose a thing and you have all of your liquidity. And so, why are people, why is anyone investing on the long end over in this 30 year section? Well, theoretically, they're trying to say, hey, we think interest rates over there could go down. So we're hoping we can make money on the upside. Who knows which way that's going to go. But when you're looking at fixed income and you're looking at bonds and thinking about things like reinvestment risk or interest rate risk, it's important to understand what's the goal of this investment. If it's to provide income without losing capital and losing a piece of your portfolio, these are very different types of risks. And as I always say, it's important to understand what you own and why you own it. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for investing your time with the personal CFO.